camera motion vector. That's a very common question. And as everything in Houdini is very simple, just click a button and it's done. Mm, not really. Well, but let's see how we can accomplish that with more clicks than we would like to have to do it, but uh, still possible to do it. So I have this scene set up here and we have the camera one moving around as you can see and you can see on this side the camera moving and the sphere there and what we want is getting the motion vector uh, of the camera on the camera space so in this case it doesn't matter if the object is moving or the camera is moving you know you get the difference from there and sometimes if you set only things that should be moving inside this container you will be captured you have the output of a transform but in this case, what we want is, no matter what happened, we get the motion. So we dive inside, or we dive anywhere inside, because we're going to create the material, it doesn't matter where you create this. And you have a principal, not a printer, a principal shader. It comes locked, but we have a key. So allow add team content, and open. And we want to get now a position or calculate the blur. Of course, the position with offset on time, and so we use the get, not at, but get, uh, blur key. So I drop it here, and we want to do the same with a time difference. So after we can subtract and get the, uh, the vector information. Well, now is the important part. We have to get it on the right space. So we're going to transform this from the current space to the NDC space. So now everybody's talking the same language, we're not inside the box anymore. It's so the same thing here. This with one, this with the zero, and we subtract. So we know the difference between them. Drop this first, the second. Nice, and we want this to be on the resolution of the image we are rendering. So let's get a render stat and put it here for the image resolution. So it's looking for the output of the image resolution, and we multiply this there. And oop, multiply, oop, something's wrong. What it is? Oh, yes. We want this output as a vector information, not a string. Uh, it's hard to multiply vectors with string or with a, uh, strings. Oh, that's possible, but not useful for what we want. Uh, you just repeat the string, I guess. And do now a bind export. So we get that information and we bind this out. Let's create this as a motion vector blue. Motion vector blue. Right, and the same thing, you don't want this a float, you want this a uh, vector. Nice. So we are getting processing information, now we go to the output. Go to the output, we create mantra output here. Something important is you need to calculate, allow motion blurs, and it does need to calculate that. You may don't want the motion blur to be on your image because no, you have to print the outside uh, AOV. You probably want to do this in post, so turn this off, but do whatever you want in the hard content. Uh, it's fine as well. It would be kind of useless to do it, but it's fine. And now we go to the extra image plane, so we are going to create our a AOV. And we did this, we named this the variable that we bind out as motion vector blur, right? Uh, if you want this to be a vector, so it is a vector. Nice, let's see if everything works. Roll the drums and let's render. Nice, let's see here. Motion, group, nothing happens. Nothing happens. What I did wrong. Oh yeah, I didn't apply the material here, so very easy. So few steps, why I forgot it. Oh. Boom, now apply it. If you render again, go there, boom. Now we can do it. And we render again.
Boom. Here we go. So now we see you have the the camera moving in one direction here, right? Let's see what happens. It's moving now sideways. Let's render this again. And it's ready. And if I have this moving in the Z, and render again. And yeah. it's yellow. Look at there. Probably have a combination of two of them, uh, two motion going on at the same time. Because it is, because as you're moving here, this object also is moving off there. Anyway, here you go. That's the, that's the solution. If you have a specific value you want for each one of the axes you want the motion blur, you just go here to the object. And the principal shader, and you can use uh, uh, vector to float, and here and float to vector. I hope yeah, float to vector. You connect this as your heart desire, as your content, and boom, you're gonna, you know, reorganize the way you want there. It's that simple. I know if it was just like a little button, it'd be boring, and uh, we would rather use another software than we did. Hope you had enjoyed. If you like it, give thumbs up, and uh, see you soon.